It's WSN Podcast, The Three Wise Men. Hello, everyone. I'm Danny Holbrook alongside Miles Holiday. We're joined by Kelsey Beimer. Guys, how was your week? It's been a great week, Danny, and how can it not be a great week? we got two great guests in front of us, and it's playoff football week. Yeah, it's it's week 11. High school football takes center stage, and, and we couldn't have better guests than we have today representing the upper side of Valley Rams, the Northwest Central Conference champions, Mason Thompson and Maddox Underwood. Guys, thanks for coming on the show. Thanks for inviting us. Absolutely. Guys, you finished 9 and one this year, a great season. You had that game against Ada to open the season, and a lot of people in the area know that's a big rivalry. Upper Side of Valley and Ada, those two schools don't like each other. They beat you by a point. Talk about that. Talk about what you thought, Mason, about the season after that game. I uh, try not to think about it. We have a long season. Uh, I think it was more about us, though. We just didn't understand ourselves, and we had what like we needed to win that game we just didn't know it yet yeah and and Maddox you guys led most of that game right and you lose it at the end of the game that had to be frustrating your senior year you you were 0-3 against Ada correct you wanted that one I can I know you hey look I'm a USV guy I know (laughs) you know I know what that meant to you what did you think after that game um it was really a tough pill to swallow but always got to have that next play mentality I mean there are still days where I just think 14 to 15 which was the final score of the game and it's really hard to get past that sometimes but now it's week 11 so we got to put that in the past and focus on the task at hand did you guys do some soul searching after that loss i mean that's an emotional tough loss a close score and a big rivalry haven't had a lot of success against them in recent memory talk to us about what the coaching staff did to keep you guys together i mean we they definitely just they helped glue us together i mean they told us it's one game that doesn't define us as a team and we still got a really long season ahead so we just put our nose to the grindstone and really pushed every single day to be better than we were that week and we were successful the rest of the season just looking forward and looking towards the next play and not the play that just happened you always got to keep your eyes forward no go ahead was there a moment during the season where like the light bulb went off you're like hey we could be pretty special i think that was week three um, against Waynesfield, and that was the Hardin County Fair week, and we have almost our whole team right. at the fair all week in the hot sun, and we still, in triple overtime, were able to pull that out, and I don't think any of us were tired because we just wanted to win. Yeah. Nice. You guys finished 9-1 and one this year, conference champions, and correct me if I'm wrong, this is the best four-year run in the history of Upper Side of Valley, the senior class, yes. right? Yeah. Yes. I heard that stat before. And guys, look, uh, I know the history of Upper Side of Valley football. The last 10 years have been really, really good for the Rams, and the move to the NWCC was a huge move. What is that like to carry that mantle? Because this program has changed drastically over the years, You know, first with Coach Josh Spencer, and then Dustin Price takes it over, and it just continues to win and continues to win. Um, It feels really good. I mean, we all want to be leaders and examples for the future of USV football, so really being the pioneers and helping be a part of of some good teams, it just really feels good to – be an example for those younger kids that are coming up and paving the way for those kids. I, uh, I think it was Coach Price told us a couple weeks ago, it's like 75% of USV's football wins in history have been the last seven, or wow. seven to eight years. Wow. And uh, that like, is just pride for the community, for football, for like us as a team. I think after we heard that, we also even stepped up. Everything our coaches tell us, we always step up and – that's got to be incredible. I'm sure the little guys, you know, you guys were once little guys going to football games saying, I can't wait to play. The community's got to be falling in love with what you guys are doing. It, it truly feels amazing because I remember being the ball boy on those sidelines That's and just cool. always wanted to be like the big guys, being mm-hmm. like the high schoolers. And now that we're finally in that position and all the little kids look up to us, it just feels really good to be an idol for those kids. Yeah, Maddox, you had 1,400 rushing yards this mm-hmm. year from the quarterback position. <laughs> What's I mean, do you like to run the ball? Or do you like to? I said earlier before the broadcast, hey, let's get Coach Price pass the ball a little bit, but 1,400 yards, I'm going to give you the ball. I mean, it, I love doing whatever Coach asked me to do, whatever's going to put us in the best position to win and put us in the best position to do the best that we can. I mean, I'll, I'll do what that is. And if that's what Coach wants me to do is run the ball, then I'll do that. How excited were you when last week you were named Northwest Central Conference Player of the Year? What, what an honor. Uh, it meant a lot. I mean, there's a lot of great candidates that we had this year in the conference, and being able to be named the Offensive Player of the Year truly meant a lot to me. And Mason, first team tight end, and I'm looking at your defensive stats, 91 tackles on your, on your side, right? Yeah. Would you like defense or offense better? Uh, I'm going to say defense because I'm the commander. He's the commander of offense. I'm kind of the commander of the defense. I'm playing that middle linebacker. I'm calling out all our strengths. I'm calling out where these people are going. Like, hard northern week, Hobson's here. I was telling everyone that. 
and we knew what to do. Well, what kind of player is Ryan Roberts for you guys? Uh, he is a huge part, and he I know he, he's in the paper a lot, but I think people really underestimate how big of a part he is since he's only a junior. Now, you guys both talked about leadership being the commander of both sides of the football, right? Um, tell me a little bit about leadership. How do you lead? Are you more of a vocal guy or by example? And what about you? Um, I try to be as much of a leader as possible in any way possible. I mean, I try to go to the weight room whenever I can and just show those younger guys that you got to put in the work if you want to be good at this sport. And I just try and be a vocal leader as well. I mean, I always have speeches after practice and during practice, just trying to get our guys pumped up and ready for the task at hand and just allowing us and trying to get us to get in that right mentality to be the best team that we can be. I, uh, I try to be the most I can, like the seniors of 2021. Uh, that was our best season in school history, mm-hmm. and those were the best seniors we could ask for. I mean, they took me and Maddox under, under their wings and showed us everything we could do and have to do to become the best that we can. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that the main reason that we are like where we're at today is because of them. They showed mm-hmm. us what we needed to be. That's mm-hmm. program culture, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. From, one, from one kid to the next, mm-hmm. and just keeps on going. Guys, obviously off the field, you guys are both uh, exemplary students. I believe you're both National Honor Society. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's got to mean something. Now you can't get away with it because both your sets mm-hmm. of parents are educators. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> you know that's going to happen. That, that means a lot, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It does. Um, I mean, have my mom as a guidance counselor. She's always pushing me to have the best grades that I can and also – getting good grades will help set up your future. So it's really a big part to, it's always academics first, then athletics. I mean, there's some times where I want it to be athletics first, but you always got to put your academics first in order to stay eligible and help your future self. Yeah. Now at tight end, okay, it's, it's a really tough position, right? Ryan Day for the Buckeyes always says it, it's the toughest position anyone can master, right? What, what is so difficult about playing tight end? Um, well, I think... It's not so different for me because last year I had to play tackle, mm, which okay. is basically a tight end without catching the ball. <laughs> not as fun. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> fun. <laughs> um, and I, so I played tight end my freshman and sophomore year. And then last year being the tackle, it showed me like what I needed to do when I'm not catching the ball. So it just made it easier. I knew okay. what to do like for both times. What's your favorite? Like there's a play call and, you know, I, I get the down block. I get the crack block. What, what's your favorite block knowing that you're going to light a guy up? Um, I think it's when so when I'm not even at tight end, but I become an H back. Nice. We run these H traps, and some Ooh. like we run them inside. It can be a nose guard who may never get trapped the whole season, and then there <laughs> he doesn't see you coming, does he? <laughs> Maddox, for you, what was it like to get to play with your brother this year? That'd oh. be something special, right? Yeah, it's it's been really special. I mean, and him coming in, him coming in as a freshman to being able to lift with me in the mornings, and me getting to take him to all the liftings and everything. Waking up, waking him up for Saturday morning practices. I mean, it's really been special. I saw a video today, and it was on my Facebook memory list, and it was a video of you as a freshman. You picked off Ryan Yingst in the Perry game. You guys beat him 26 to mm-hmm. nothing that year. Talk about the development of your freshman year up till now being player of the year in the conference. I mean, freshman year was really, it really molded me. I mean, again, having those leaders my freshman year of the senior class, it really helped mold us into the people that we are today and the players that we are today. And I mean, that season was really memorable, and I really had a lot of fun that, that season. And this season's also, I've had a, a great amount of fun. And just getting to the place where, I'm a, where I am today and looking back on freshman year, I'm like, wow, th- things have changed, but they've changed for the better. And Mason, look, you guys have been inseparable since kindergarten. I've watched you guys grow up together. What's, what's this guy mean to you, and what's, what's he mean to you? I know, I'm putting you on the, su- on the spot a little bit. <laughs> guys don't get those emotions mm-hmm. out there, but I know the friendships. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, this guy means everything. I mean, I wouldn't have ever went to a morning lifting my eighth grade year <laughs> unless he got me to go. And, That's honesty right there. Mm-hmm. And in my uh, walk across the field on senior night, I told him I should have thanked him, but I just ran out of room. And <laughs> there's, there's so many things for this guy. I mean, he basically just got me where I am, and he just keeps helping me get there. Uh, now, your little brother's a freshman, right? Yeah. What kind of big brother are you? <laughs> I, well, he's a sophomore, so he's a little oh, okay. grown up all now. Right. He's a little, little better than he was his freshman year. But freshman year, I mean, he would forget some stuff. But now he's a lot better. But it, it means a lot to get to play with him and be able to him snap the ball to me. I mean, we have to That's have that really connection, cool. yeah. that brotherly connection. So I, it's been really fun getting to play with him. 
Got Delphi St. John's coming up this weekend. It's the Mac. Mm-hmm. We talked about that before. Give us your impressions of what you guys have to do to move on to the second round. I mean, they're a really solid team. I know injuries have hurt them, but they're still Delphi St. John's. I mean, they're a really solid team. They got some really good defensive linemen, offensive linemen, and some skilled guys that can really make some some plays. So we really have to be on our A game this week. Yeah, Mason, defensively, what do you guys got to do to slow them down? Uh, I think we just need to know that we're tenth in the state. All right, well, like we just need to Confidence. know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's all we need. We know, like we go through the X's and O's every Monday, and we're we're looking at the scouting report all week, mm-hmm. and we know what we need to do. We just have to have the confidence to do it. All right, be honest. You know, nobody's really listening, right? <laughs> are you a little bit tired of hearing all about the Mac? Are you? Are, it's okay if you are. Are you? A little bit. It does get a little tiring. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. I, I love the honesty because you guys play really good football, right? Mm-hmm. And automatically people will say, DSU, oh, they're in the MAC, right? And so automatically everybody thinks, well, the MAC should win. It's, it's you know, no slight to them. It's no, a no, great, it's, great, it's, great yeah, conference, it's great, right? Yeah. But you guys play really good football as well, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, they're, it's a great conference. They have a lot of great teams that come out of that conference. But I think it is time for us to kind of show that we can also play with some of these bigger teams. Yeah, and you're going after the ball game, Friday, yeah, right? yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right, guys. Before we let you go, I ask every guest that we have on the show. <laughs> all right, and, and Miles knows what's happening here. I want to know the one team you want to beat the most every year in every sport. Mm-hmm. It's, it's it's always that one team, right? It's always that basketball. Fo- and you guys are basketball football guys, but mm. that one team, Mason. I'm gonna go with Hard Northern. <laughs> okay. Um, every year. All I hear about preseason is all oh, Harden Northern's got all these numbers, or they got all this size this year. They got oh, they got this kid, they got that kid, and then we play them, and they're 0 four against us in high school. So it doesn't matter. Trash talk. <laughs> I like it. I like it. I like it. I like For me, I mean, there's a few teams. Uh, mainly Waynesfield, Harden Northern, and Ridgemont. It, there's you got to give me one. Oh, <laughs> one. One would probably be Waynesfield because I mean okay. they. They it's, a, kinda, it's a big league rivalry, yeah, yeah. And they kind of kicked our butts the last two yeah. years, so getting Three to go teams, yeah. to their place and beat them senior year felt really, really good, especially the way that we beat them in triple mm-hmm. overtime. I mean, that was a big win, and I'm really glad we got yeah, that win. Yeah, and you know that's where I work, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> a couple questions for you guys. All right, first one, uh, Coach Price, uh, give us some things that maybe people don't know about him. What do you love about playing for him? Uh, he's always – focused on like the task like this needs done he's focused on it he, he knows how he's going to get us and the team there and that's all he's all he's thinking about I mean he's he doesn't get distracted very easily in practice he's he's quiet and focused and he just gives us what we need I think he prepares us so well I think that's what a lot of people don't he doesn't get enough credit for is how well he prepares us Scouting I mean, reports. he gives his scouting reports are so in depth, and the film that we watch and what what he looks at is just he does so much to get us prepared for a game, and that's why I think we're so prepared when we go in on Fridays for the team that we're playing is because of how he's taught us through the week and coached us through the week. Last question I have for you guys: I'm going to paint the picture. You're in Canton, all right? You guys just win the state title. Who are you running to first to hug? Coach Price. Really? Coach Price. Yeah, it's staying on the field. I'm going with Coach Price. Uh, I mean, it's four years that he's coached me, and then we were both on the sidelines, like, I think from, like, fourth grade up until uh, well, I became a freshman. I was being a water boy, ball boy. I mean, I watched him do everything. I'm always watching him. I think he's the first one. I would have put you guys in. <laughs> <laughs> It'd probably be Coach Price for me, too. I mean, he's done a lot for us, sacrificed a lot for us, pushed us to be the best that we can. Now, if it, somebody off the field, it'd definitely be my parents, hands down. I mean, they've pushed me and done so much for me in my career, leading from when I was in elementary school to now, and I just thank them a lot for all that they do for me. Guys, thanks so much for coming. Yep. Really thank really you for having us. It. Absolutely. Yeah. Mason Thompson, Best Maddox Underwood. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you guys so much. Tonight's show is brought to you by Charles River, dedicated to improving life by discovering new therapies and cures for devastating diseases. We are a strong supporter of our local community, as well as educational opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math throughout the Allen County region. Learn more about Charles River at SeaRiver.com. And Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, located in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Locally owned and operated, Lee's is not just famous for chicken, we're famous for catering, too. And Ultimate Outdoor. Bring resort-style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. 
It's the Diamond Dave Bowen best thing we saw all week. Miles, we'll start with you. Hey, every week we see something extraordinary. We, we sure do. I, I had the Columbus Grove game against Bluffton, the game of the century, mm-hmm. right? Boy, it was Columbus Grove absolutely physical. They were about as physical as you can be on a football field. Danny, listen to these guys. Gavin Barraza, all he does is intercept passes, had another one, five to lead them. That's really good. Trent Barraza, if you go back and watch our broadcast, he scores a touchdown and he goes on the sideline for Columbus Grove on our cameras. Great job following him. The intensity, it was almost like there was lasers shooting out of his eyes. That's how focused he was. He was unbelievable. 190 yards in the first half. Kalen Mays, the big fella for them. He's good. Bench pressing kids and getting sacks that way. Brady Basinger, one, one unbelievable tight end, lead blocker, Leighton Blakenmeyer. He was so good on the pole and at the defensive end. The performance that Columbus Grove put out was absolutely outstanding. And then my second one, you know, always like more than one. How about the cold water 50 50 oh, winner? $22,500, $22,500. Oh yeah. $22, and I always say they should announce who wins it because then you can watch him run to his car. Oh, so. yeah. <laughs> He's buying pizza for everybody. Yeah. yeah. Kelsey, what was the best thing you saw this yeah, week? Yes. So I had the Shawnee Kitten game last week, and I thought that was just too. Good teams that were really going at it, doing their best to win that game. I mean, it was 48 to 47 that game. It was just tons of offense. And I give, I want to give a shout out to um, Nate Garlock, who's usually your third wise man, yeah. uh, filling in for him tonight. But he broadcasted that game. And his son, Michael Garlock, was a senior. So that was his last game. And he just absolutely popped off that game. He had 174 yards, three touchdowns. And it was so cool to listen to Nate broadcast and see his son have his best game of the season on that last night and finish off his high school career. So that was my best thing of the week. It was really cool to see. Really cool picture of the two of them. That after was that a game. fantastic yeah. picture. Yeah, so on cool. Facebook. Guys, uh, Darren Gilbert and I had the great honor of going down to Ridgemont. We got to see Ridgemont play Waynesville Gosh in a great NWCC battle. But what I want to talk about is the fact that Ridgemont, they finished the season 8-2. and two. Mm-hmm. Traditionally, they haven't had a strong pro. Now, back in the 70s, back in my days, <laughs> they were pretty good. They have not been very good for a long time. Travis Travis Reddick has changed the culture at Ridgemont. They are fantastic. They're hosting a playoff game this week. The community is bonkers right now. They've got a beautiful facility over there. Everything is just going positive for Ridgemont. We don't give them a lot of love. I'm giving them some love. The Golden Gophers, 8-2. and two. Travis Reddick's got them fired up. Home playoff game. You can't ask for more than that. Absolutely. Yeah. There's so much love to be given to all these high school teams around the area going into playoffs. There's so many good teams, so many good players, and it's going to be fun to watch. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, you know, I've got a great game this weekend. You guys have got great games yeah. this weekend. Uh, we've been talking to Nick about future down the road, so this is the best time of the year. Speaking of playoff games, let's take a look at the WOSN matchup, shall we? Yep. It's a preview of the WSN Week 11 playoff schedules. Guys, Game 1, Pandora Gilboa at Lima Central Catholic. Randy Roberts, our own Miles Holiday on the call. What do you think about Pandora Gilboa? Do you think Andrew Miller will get a lot of carries against that vaunted LCC defense? Look, the only way I see PG success, they got to keep LCC's offense off the field. And not turn the ball over, right? We've right, had Corey right. Girton, the quarterback, before at 1,108 yards with 13 TDs, but he has thrown nine interceptions. So that is a formula for mm-hmm. non success, right? So you got to run the football. Danny, I know you love Andrew Miller. And I do. There's I really a do. lot to love. He's a physical dude. He's 990. 96 yards, 14 TDs. He is a load. But don't forget about Ben Burkholder also, 845 yards. That's what PG needs to do. They've got to run the football, shorten this football game, because LCC, I know they only score about 24 points a game on offense, but they have the chance to be explosive, right? Mm -hmm. Quatman's healthy again. The big arm of Brady Parker is scary. Now, is he going to have one of his best threats, though? The rumor is that there's a, a receiver that might not, not play, play for right. LCC, and if that is a factor, watch out. Uh, both teams have unbelievable defenders. Landon Moore uh, with seven tackles for loss for PG. This is a team that has 35 tackles for loss, Pandora Gilboa does. So if they can get LCC on second and long, third and long, that's going to go a long way. But let me tell you. One of the best linebackers you're ever going to see, Caden Falky at LCC. Watch that young man play. He plays football the right way. Unbelievable linebacker. Him against Andrew Miller, 
Oh, I can't wait to see that matchup. Yeah. Kelsey, you and I had LCC earlier this year. We did. Now, you want to talk about have to be physical. They played carry that night, a really physical team, as physical as Pandora Goboa, yeah. and we saw Brady Parker just ball out. Matthew Quabbin, I think he had four touchdowns that yeah. night. Yeah, they were really fantastic that day, and I've been lucky to see LCC quite a few times over the season, and Miles, I think you said it really well. They have the opportunity to be explosive. They have run threats, pass threats, you know, short, long. They have really fantastic talent, and I'm expecting this game against Pandora Goboa to be a pretty good one. Absolutely. Guys, go ahead, Miles. One last thing, yeah. okay? I, I want to point this out. Yeah. Because, you, you know, Brady Parker, we talk about his big arm, right? Yeah. Who's the second leading rusher in NWC? The, the second? Brady Parker. Brady Parker. Yeah, Brady Parker, yeah. yeah. 532, 39 yards rushing, and he is a load. He's 6'3", like 220 pounds. You don't want to tackle him. I know who's number one. <laughs> <laughs> I think there's a kid at Columbus Grove. CB3. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Guys, game two, Franklin comes into Wapakoneta. Nate Garlock and Mark Shine, the legend Mark Shine on the call. Guys, I- I'm just going to say this right now. I feel bad for Franklin. <laughs> Wapakoneta's on a mission. You said it. I keep repeating it. My famous line they got dudes, dudes oh, yeah. everywhere even second guys are dudes man there's yeah. dudes everywhere look it, it's one of those games that i think pack and longsworth you just hand the ball to them every once in a while throw it out the page and you're going to score on your first drive and then many times uh this is a franklin team guys uh danny you said you feel bad for him well you should especially offensively six times yeah. they've only scored one td or less They've been shut out four times this year. Oh, wow. It's not looking good for Franklin as they go to a red hot Wapakoneta team. Yeah, you know what this means? Running clock. <laughs> so, you might see that. Yeah, Kelsey, this, this, and I said this before, and I'll continue to say this. I think Wapakoneta, after Marion Local, has the best program yeah. in all of North Bust Ohio. WSN gives them so much love. Yeah. That's a great program. Yeah, they deserve the love. I mean, they're really good. Another team, Wapak, I've been able to see a ton. And when you said running clock, that's what I'm used to when I'm at, <laughs> right, when I'm at Wapak. Right. I saw them last against Bath, and they were so and I mean, Caleb Moyer, he's just, he's been one of the most impressive quarterbacks I've seen this whole season. He's really good. He hardly makes any mistakes. He's just, the vision he sees in the field, his passes are so accurate. He's he throws a, a catchable ball, sure. doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's always in the right spot. And I'm glad you said that. Do you yeah. know how many interceptions he has this year? Uh, zero, right? Zero, yes. Yeah. Yeah. She knows. Yeah. Throw, I, I know. throw one this week. I'm telling you, just throw Why? one this week. Because <laughs> you don't want to carry that all the way deep into the playoffs, right? Just get it out of the way. Right? But, just, she, but what if he ends with zero? Yeah, she For said the whole it, year? Yeah. yeah. That'd be amazing, she wouldn't it? She said it best, yeah. though. His accuracy is what makes him who he is. Yeah. He is the smartest quarterback that I've seen. And I've seen some great quarterbacks this year. He's the smartest. When I talk about reading defenses and knowing exactly exactly where to line his guys up. You can tell he's a field general. Yeah. I, I'm telling you, though, you get a big lead on Friday. And you you want to throw one? <laughs> Travis, go over to Caleb and say, look, just pick one out for the guys. I used to do that. I would tell my scout team quarterback, throw an interception. Like, yeah. what, what? I want my defense to feel good right now. Just get it out of the way. Throw That's that good. to him. Guys, game three, Delphi St. John's goes to McGuffey. They take on the upper side of Valley Rams. Patrick Kamler, Dave Bowen. Uh, we talked to Mason Thompson and Maddox Underwood yeah. earlier today. Miles, uh, this is a big game for upper side of Valley. Not only is it a playoff game, it's the MAC. And there's that stigma <laughs> with the MAC. And these guys from upper side of Valley, they're 9 and 1. They've been beating guys at a pretty good clip. They feel real confident. What's your thoughts on this game? I loved how focused and determined they were. Like when you asked them, "Are you tired of hearing about the Mac?" They didn't shy away from it. No, they, they did not. And they looked right at you and they said, "Yeah." So you could tell it, they've taken it a little bit personal, right? I would rather have the team that is nine and one that has had success, right, as opposed to the team that has really struggled, D- DSJ. Yeah. Um, but they say you're they're in the Mac. They play a great conference. Yeah, but you got to build those guys up again, right? And convince them that you have a chance to win because they haven't won a lot, right? Right. USV, they know they can win. They have one of the most dynamic players around, too, the player of the year in the conference. I really like USV's chances because just because of that focus. Yeah. Maddox Underwood ran for 1,437 yards this year, Kelsey. Top that off with Ryan Roberts, the starting tailback, who runs for 1,200 yards. I think they'll run a little bit against Delphi St. John. I definitely think they will, yeah. And, like, we had Mason and Maddox in earlier, and you could just tell they were so focused on this game. It seems like they have a really good culture there at USB. I'm expecting good good, things from them, and they were a a good interview for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And then you look at Mason and Maddox, both of them on defense. Uh, (laughs) Mason has 91 tackles. Maddox has 84. They do it on both sides of the ball. It's a physical group over there, right? And uh, so I think that's going to bode well because, 
because everybody talks about how physical the Mac is. Uh, DSJ, um, not 100% healthy, but right. if they have Boggs back. Uh, that's going to be their formula, right? The senior quarterback is going to have to make plays not with just his arm, but with his feet as well. Yeah. Guys, game four, Lipsick is at Ada. Myself and Darren Gilbert will be on the call for this one. Guys, this one has me so excited. Not only the fact that I get to announce a game, which I get excited about yeah. every week, they just played Friday night. Uh-huh. Ada wins that game 29 to 26. Now, look, we talked about Maddox Underwood, the quarterback at Upper Side of Valley. The guy over at Ada, Levi Green, doesn't take a back seat to anybody. This kid has 1,400 rushing yards this year. I'm telling you, he's got 1,000 throwing yards, and he's got a running back back in the backfield with him, Kane Fisher, 890 yards. No secret what they want to do. They want to run, run, run. You look at uh, Lipsick, Mark Kirkendall, the quarterback. He's got 16 touchdowns through the air. I can't wait for this matchup. You got one team saying, yeah, we can beat you again. You got another team saying, revenge is on our mind. Well, if you're going to beat Lipsick, make sure you do it this year because it's not going to happen. It's going to be a really good team. It's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, Kirkendall, just a freshman, the, the coach's son, 63%. 2,600 or 2,065 yards, 16 TDs as you said, but 12 interceptions. Right. So a freshman goes into uh, the playoffs. Is he going to be able to take care of the football? You think at some point in time he's going to put it up in a bad spot? Uh, Caleb Hickman, who leads Ada with four interceptions, that's his opportunity to, to, to steal the ball. Look, I like Levi Green. You you he's gave really us his good. stats, yeah. but the one that really impresses me, Danny, 64 percent of his passes he completes. That yeah. that, that, that guy's a player, right? Yeah. Lipsick, if they have a chance gotta get the ball to Breck and Lammers on the outside yeah Kelsey let me ask you this you got a team that just played the team Friday night yeah who has the advantage in this game after a three-point win by the Bulldogs yeah I love the storyline of this game (laughs) right right coming off it's a soap opera (laughs) yeah exactly if honestly if I'm lip sick you know just losing that by three points I'm more motivated than ever so yeah. I, I kind of like being the other dog. Like you guys get regular season, we're gonna get the playoffs this time. Yeah, which which team is going to look at the film and let's say we run, uh, you know, the the uh, um, jet sweep over and over again, right? And and then maybe this week we put the jet sweep pop pass in off of it, right? Yeah. Whoever yeah. has something complimentary that they showed on film from last week, you know, plays that little chess when the other team's playing checkers might have the advantage. Now, if it comes down to kicking though, Andrew Allen at Ada, you ready for this? 37 of 37 on extra points. That's pretty good. That's, <laughs> that's, really, good. that's really impressive for high school. Yeah, that, that's really good. That's really good. Tonight's show is brought to you by Charles River, dedicated to improving life by discovering new therapies and cures for devastating diseases. We are a strong supporter of our local community, as well as educational opportunities in science, technology, engineering, and math throughout the Allen County region. Learn more about Charles River at SeaRiver.com. And Lee's Famous Recipe Chicken, located in Wapak, Delphus, and St. Mary's. Locally owned and operated, Lee's is not just famous for chicken, we're famous for catering, too. An ultimate outdoor. Bring resort style living to your backyard every day with a luxury outdoor space by Ultimate Outdoor. Automated pergolas, retractable walls and screens, outdoor furniture, and outdoor kitchens. All right, guys, some big games in local high school playoffs last weekend. Obviously, there were two that are on everybody's mind Marion Local Coldwater. Marion Local Machine just keeps on going, Miles. They take out Coldwater. And when I say take out Coldwater, that's a Ooh, really good yeah. Coldwater team. Yeah. And they made it look easy. Yeah, he, he, Chip Otten, he's got to he say to himself, what, what do we have to do, right? It, yeah. it seems like it's every year 9-0 and versus 9-0, and and they go in that game, and, and Coldwater tries their best, but they don't even get within you know two, three touchdowns of them. This Marion Local team – what are they giving up, Danny? Two points a game yeah. defensively? Yeah. That's, that's absolutely ridiculous. That's so good. That's a Coldwater team that later we're going to talk about favorites to win a state title. I could say Coldwater could still win a state absolutely. title, right? Yeah. Absolutely. That Marion local team, I thought everybody thought it was going to be a good game. Boy, they really made a statement, didn't they? Yeah, they absolutely did. And, Kelsey, you look at that game. Mm-hmm. Uh, is this possibly the best high school team Lima Land's ever seen? We're talking about a team that won back-to-back state titles the last two years. They returned 18 starters. I could argue it might be the best high school team we've ever seen in this area. I absolutely think they have an argument for that. And Marion Local, I mean, going back to when I was in high school, they they were good then, and that was like 12 years ago. So, I mean, Marion Local has always been That's when it started to get really good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, they've always been an established team. Um, they absolutely have the argument to be the best team in Ohio. But, I mean, their legacy and what they've yeah. done is amazing. Yeah. The other game of the week last week, guys, Columbus Grove at Bluffton. Didn't turn out to be such a great game. Columbus Grove, look, 
I'm not saying I'm not. I'm just saying yeah. if there's any team in the area that's got a no. shot at Marion Local, it's the Grove Bulldogs, and yeah. they just – I always look at teams, guys, when they have big games – and they go on the road, and they do what they did to that team on oh, the road. I, I, that's a measuring stick. Yeah, forty-two nothing, and I'm here to tell you, it wasn't that close. It really wasn't. Yeah, yeah it was. There. It was totally dominated by Columbus Grove. Uh, Barraza was amazing in that first half. Now I say that, but he had huge holes because oh. that offensive line and his lead blockers were just destroying people. Now here's the thing for Bluffton that's concerning. That's now eight losses in a row. Columbus Grove mm-hmm. knows how to win that game. They, do. they walked on that field confident. You could see them. They had no doubt. Bluffton hoped that they could win that game. Yeah. Big difference. Yeah. That's a- Guys, Lima Sr. went up to Toledo start. Uh, they went into that game uh, undefeated. You know, we had talked on the radio and we talked on the podcast a yeah. little bit about Lima Sr. We had that question out there. Were they as good as their record? Yeah. And I think that's a legitimate question to ask. The, 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 the league is not that good. Uh, does this, Miles, this game, does it put some doubt about the Lima Sr. kids? Because I, I think they're still a really good team. Well, you, you said the league's not that good, but Start will tell you that it is. Yeah. Right, yeah, yeah, yeah right. Yeah, start had this game ready to go, and you got to believe that Lima Sr. thought really well that they're going to win that football football game. Sure, right? sure. They had been steamrolling everybody, but then, oh, what happens when you don't stop a team from running the football, right? It means you don't get the ball. Then all of a sudden, when you're playing a spread team, and that spread team's not on offense, and they're used to scoring points, scoring points, and getting a, a rhythm of the football game, and that rhythm is thrown off, they don't know how to react, and that's what exactly what Start did. They controlled the football game by running it, and they shortened that football game. And then all of a sudden, when you're a spread team and you haven't scored in a while, you start pressing and you start going a little bit faster than what you're used to doing, and things just get really frustrating real quick. Hats off to Start. Great yeah. game plan. Kelsey, do you think there's pressure on the Lima Senior Program, knowing they were 9-0 and going into that game, they get beat like they did? And Miles is right. Their offense did not play well at all and give a lot of credit to Toledo Start. Right. Do you think they feel like they have to prove something in the playoffs? Let's just say they win a game I, I I personally think they got to win a couple games for me to go yeah. you know what I think they're back I think that's fair um I do think they're probably under a little bit of pressure I think you know 95 percent of people you would have asked were going to say that that Lima senior team was going to go undefeated this season I, I thought they were yeah, yeah a lot of people did so I do think they probably have a little bit of pressure but me trying to think of it in a positive way if there's any time I wanted to lose a game it would be one week before playoffs kind of like that fire give them motivation mm. and going yeah. into Refocus the playoffs them, right? yeah absolutely yeah. Uh, bad timing for them though uh, they start their fall break on Thursday yes. and oh. Friday and then they play a playoff game Friday night you can tell kids all you want kids Don't, are creatures of habits do yeah. not yeah. sleep in you know, right? you're going to get kids that are going to sleep to 1 o'clock they're right. going to show up at the stadium all groggy that schedule gets thrown off uh, so I, I wish for their sake that they were still in school for the playoff game. Guys, I want to get your thoughts on something that we've seen a lot of this week, and that's teams opting out of the playoffs. Yes. Teams saying, you know what, we don't have enough healthy bodies, or or we don't recognize the fact that we made the playoffs. We're just not comfortable being at two and eight. Whatever the reason is, what's your thoughts on teams opting out of the playoffs? And what's it say about the OHSA? I know your thoughts, Miles. <laughs> you can just see it. <laughs> we all know. Look, if you are scheduled to play, you play, yeah. sure, right? Sure. I, I was a head football coach, and you'd get these schools that would say, hey, Hey coach, we're not going to play the JV game. Why? Well, we got a guard that's hurt. Man, put a full back there. Go play the game. You're scheduled to play. You have healthy bodies. Yeah. Look, I, I've seen teams show up with 12, 13 kids and play a football game, right? If you have an obligation, you are scheduled to play, you teach the kids that you live up to your obligation, you go play. I made the playoffs in Tennessee. We had a couple times where we went to schools and you're like, we have no chance. We played one school, Milan, Tennessee. I didn't have one young man that could start for them, and we went and played them. We lost 62-21, but we had a lot of fun, and we got to play, and we lived up to our obligation. We showed them, look, you have something that to do. You have to fulfill that. That's called discipline, right? Yeah. Doing what you're supposed to do when you're supposed to do it. So these teams that opt out, I don't think you're teaching your young men what it means to be successful in life. Yeah. Now, Miles says those teams that make the playoffs should play the playoff game. Yeah. Let me get your thoughts, Kelsey. Do you think a two and eight, a three and seven, a four and six team should make the playoffs? That's a hard one because obviously with the format they have now, those teams are making the playoffs. Sure. But I, I mean, yeah, that's a setup. If they're in, they're in. But I agree with what Miles said. You got to teach these kids discipline. I mean, if anything, give them the experience. Let them have experience on a bigger stage. You know, any experience at this level is going to be great. Teach these kids 
give them good discipline, make, I'd have them play for sure. Danny, it's tough to judge records because, you know, you look at the bottom part of the MAC and you say, well, there's some teams that made the playoffs with, you know, subpar records, but then you say, well, they played the MAC. Right? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. They should right, make the right, AFC right, playoffs. Right. It, yeah. it, it's not like, you know, it's the Cincinnati Bengals making the playoffs or something with a bad record. So it is a tough thing to say when you look at overall records, but the teams that just beg out because well, we just don't want to do it, right? It was a shame that they had to go three deep to find someone to play Marion local. Yeah. And you should be honored. The, they found them in the yeah. map. Yeah, you should be honored to yeah. go play I in the playoffs. I think so, too. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. All right, guys, let's get right into it. A little Ohio State Buckeye chatter. The good, the bad, the Buckeye. <laughs> the good. How, how about Will Howard? Oh. Without Will Howard, we lose in a giant upset to Nebraska, right? What he did in that fourth quarter on the game-winning drive, that's exactly why you bring Will Howard in. It's a shame, Danny and Kelsey, that Will Howard's only got one year in Columbus. It is, it, really. Because I think he could be one of the, the greatest. He's that good. He would be a folk hero forever. Yeah. Yeah, if he had two, three years now, that's – that, you know, maybe he still go, goes on and leads Ohio State to the national championship. He'll be a folk hero forever then, sure. right? But if he had two, three years here, he would be like JT Barrett, right? JT Barrett never really won anything big, but yet when you talk about him, everybody loves him, right? That's the kind of guy that Will Howard is. I thought he was absolutely fantastic and needed to be because the rest of the offense on the offensive line, really bad. Yeah, and is that your bad? Thing? That's my bad. <laughs> so the thing I don't get, Danny, I, I, I know football a little bit, right? Um, it, you put in a, a guy playing left tackle for the first time ever starting right but he's been in your program for four years and snap number three he does something that no offensive line should ever do he's run blocking and he crosses his feet mm -hmm. yeah. he crossed his feet where's where your balance where's your, your your strength at that point so that's telling me hmm what's he being coached What's he being taught on, a, wonder, daily, yeah. on a, a daily basis? Well, I think right? Justin Fry is under the microscope Justin right now. Justin Fry, yeah. the offensive line coach. I know he's yeah. Ryan Day's best friend, but doggone it. If that's what that's the best you're teaching, right. and, and what's Urban Meyer always say, you're either teaching it or allowing it, right? Something's wrong there. Something is very wrong on the yeah. offensive line. And your choice for the Buckeye? Uh, the Buckeye? Um, well, I, I thought it was Will Howard. Right. Yeah. yeah. yeah it, it, it has to be. He can be the good and and the Buckeye. It, you could always go with the Jeremiah Smith, right? But how about Carnell Tate? He did pretty well. Oh, he's too. fantastic. Yeah yeah, yeah. 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 So yeah. you could also go to the defense. I mean, there were so many good things about the defensive side. Did you like the fact that the defense was much more aggressive? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You have to. Right. Have to. Three sacks and, and a lot of hurries. Yeah. yeah. It, it got the big turnover yeah. when it needed. Kelsey, the Buckeye chatter. Yeah. I know you're new to the show here. We pick yeah. somebody that did a really good job. Somebody that did not. Good job. And yep. then the Buckeye. Right. All right. So for the good, I'm going to say Carnell Tate. Ohio State has really good wide receivers, and he had some fantastic catches that game. I think if anything, watching Ohio State, the wide receivers really stick out to me. They have really long threats, and there was a couple of really good touchdowns in that game on the receiving side. For the bad, I'm going to say – I heard that there was a lot of booing fans and fans throwing on the field. I mean, I understand when people are expecting for – they have high expectations for the Buckeyes because, you, you know – think? Yeah, <laughs> right. But, I mean, it gets to a point. I mean, they won the game. I don't know. I can understand it, but – Sometimes, I mean, if, if you're throwing stuff on the field, I think that's a little. Your mom and dad, were they? Were, were they, they booing? Did they throw stuff on the field? I don't know. But, <laughs> but they, told me, yeah, they told me people were throwing stuff, but they didn't say if they oh were or weren't. Goodness. So maybe they were. I'm like, oh, geez, they shouldn't do that. <laughs> yeah, my, my mom definitely was. <laughs> she didn't throw anything? No, but Your people, dad but might, people were. He might, yeah. People were upset, that's for sure. So I'm going to go with that for the bad, although I do understand it in a certain yeah. regards. And for the Buckeye, I'm going to say Ryan Day because he, oh, he coached a good game. They they won it. It was close. So I mean, I'm gonna give it to Coach a rare Ryan Buckeye Day. fan happy That's with right. Ryan Day. Yeah, yeah. we'll wow. take it. Wow, uh, guys, for me, the good was Will Howard. I, Miles and I talk about Will Howard all the time. I think he is a fantastic quarterback. I think he is exactly what this offense needs. He has. I never look at him and think he's worried. That kid looks confident. Yeah. Yeah. He yeah. stood at the podium after that game, and they said, what do you think about Penn State? And he said, I'm going to be real honest with you. And you, he was laser-focused. He goes, I grew up in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. I wanted to go to Penn State. They didn't offer me. I can't wait for Saturday. Yeah. That's the kind of quarterback we That's need awesome. in Columbus. Yeah. That's the kind of kid you want standing up there. And he may not have a great game, but you know what? Everything he's done this year on the road at home has showed me he's going to play lights out Saturday. A great move by Ohio State not letting him talk this week too, right? right. Yeah. Right. 
because he, he, he's so fired up, and that was right after the game against Nebraska. He might say something that was bulletin board material during the week. So good move by them, pulling him back a little bit. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and my bad is the offensive line. That is Oof. as bad a performance as I have seen yeah. in, in 10, 15 years in he Columbus. He texting me during I, the game. I was texting Miles, and I'm like, are you, are you kidding me? And he's doing a game, and he's I not was, watching the game. Albion. And I'm like, you you got to see, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And, and – uh, Look, we got told at the bye week we're going to work on this, this, and that, and it just didn't look. And I know there's a lot of things to work on, guys, but this is big-time college football. You know what your weakness is. It's the offensive line. Get it together. Shore it up and bring in your five best guys. And it didn't look like they had their best five. Yeah, they better figure things out in a hurry because this is a Penn State defensive line that might, after you. They, yeah. they might be the best defensive line we face yeah. all year. Now, there is something good about that, though, right? Nebraska, 3-3-5 type thing all offensive linemen will tell you that we don't like to have to move and think at the same time right, right. people flying around mm-hmm. not knowing for sure is difficult Penn State doesn't do that they're they're gonna line up and they're gonna say here we are are you gonna be stronger than us are you gonna be able to kick our butt that's gonna help Ohio State because they're not gonna have to try and figure things out they only know where guys are at yeah my, my buck guy this week was uh, Cody Simon I thought he was fantastic why do you not let him pass rush more he is athletic right. he is fast you've got guys on the back end that can cover for him in styles and, and, and downs. Let him come up and yep. let him and go to run coverage. Let him pass rush so much it drives me nuts. It felt like they finally opened it up a little bit, and I don't know that Nebraska's offensive line is the best we've seen all year. Mm-hmm. Typically, Nebraska has a good line, but it, it, Cody Simon was really good, and I haven't seen good linebacker play in a long time. Credit Jim Knowles, though, because yeah. he, he knew exactly the protection schemes in Nebraska, and I thought he called timely blitzes against that. Yeah. And got guys free. Yeah. Guys, it's time to pick our top three teams in the area that we think have the best chance to make it to Canton. When I say Canton, I'm talking about the state finals. I'm telling you, the pinnacle of Ohio high school football, Miles. All right. So, uh, Marion Local, right? I I think we. (laughs) Shocker. What? It it would take an act of God, maybe, right? A giant storm or the National Guard getting involved or something. Marion Local is getting to Canton. There's no doubt in my mind. Look, when this season is over, that might be in history the greatest team in Ohio ever, right? It it, it could be, right? That's how epic this team is. I really like Wapakoneta. If they don't make it, I'm going to be surprised, right? They are just – that's why I say get rid of the interception now. Throw the interception (laughs) now so you don't have that jinx. I hope Coach Moyer's not listening to this podcast. Tell him to throw it. Have have faith in Shovel pass or something, (laughs) right? (laughs) Give it to the other team. Get that out of the way. Uh, Coldwater, I I love them, right? They are so well coached, and they are so good. But I'm going to throw another name at you keep an eye on liberty benton liberty benton you talk about dudes everywhere like wapa canetta look at what they did all right zach elkert player of the year in the bbc defensive player of the year austin cullert with 12 tackles for loss cj barbara 26 tackles for loss trevin lieb quarterback of the year in the bbc seth elkert oh yeah by the way all he's gonna do is go play at ut right yeah you're right he doesn't even get player of the year (laughs) <laughs> That's how good they are. And Will Granger, the big offensive line. Look, BVC play is good. This uh, Liberty Benton team is really good. Yeah, Kelsey, your top three teams to move into the state finals. Yeah, yeah. so I'm going to copy Miles a little bit. Of course, Marion Local, not too yeah, much to say Yeah, I'm not the only there. one that came up with that one. Yeah, <laughs> I think everyone's going to say that. My second one, I'm going to go Wapak as well. I've seen them a lot this year. I really think they're a force to be reckoned with. They're a good team. Caleb Moyer heading the offense. Um, Travis Moyer coaching that team. I think they're really good. They have a lot of um, talent on that team. So I'm going to back Walpock to make it. And third, I'm going to go with the boys we had in the studio here. Uh, hey. I'm going to go with USB. Wow, They've nice. had a fantastic right. season. The guys seem like they're really determined. Seems like they have a great environment back there at USB. And I- I'm going to back them to, to make it to Canton. Go awesome. Rams. Yeah. Well, you think you followed Miles' lead. You're, you're not going to like this because I have the same three <laughs> teams. And I, I don't think it's hard to figure out why. Yeah. Marion Local, an absolute juggernaut. Yeah. The, yeah. the best team we've seen in a long, long time. I don't think there's going to be any hiccups if – if, and please don't, Marion local fans, don't take this the wrong way. If they would get upset, 
we would be talking about it as one of the biggest Epic. upsets in the oh, history of OHSA 100%. football. Absolutely. Yeah. And Wapakoneta, what, what, what do you need to win a state title? You need a great quarterback who's a field general. They've got it. They need a great defense. They need depth. And they need great coaching. They got all of them. They Check do. the box. They sure do. Check the box. I'm telling you. And then Coldwater. I'm, go, I'm calling it right now. The MAC is going to have two state winners. I'm telling you. Coldwater – we, we look at that game against Marion Local and we go, oh, cold water. No, they're really good. They, are. they just they are. played the Pittsburgh Steelers from 1978 <laughs> and they got beat. So for me, it's Marion Local, Wapakoneta, cold water. Yeah, very good. Yeah. Guys, great show. Let's do it again next week. You want to? Absolutely. All right. You've been listening to Three Wise Men on WSN.